legit scientists right now are positing that we live in a simulation. I feel like a lot of stuff is going on in the world that's brought up a lot of these conversations, even in our last couple episodes, just with UAP disclosure and, you know, the Nephilim agenda that we always come back to. The world largely rejects their message and treats them as hostile extraterrestrials who must be stopped at any cost. Hey campers, welcome back to another episode of Camp Herman. I'm Chris Price. We've got Tinfoil Tori in the house and our boy Mikey Stibbs. What's up, y'all? Hey, Chris. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. What's going on? How's it going, Chris? Pretty good, man. You know, we are, what is today, like the 16th of January, maybe the 17th? Does it feel like so much has happened in the last, like, two and the first two and a half? or, you know, two, two and a half weeks of 2024. Like, it feels like we've been in this year for months now. Like, it's been insane. Like, what is, what is happening? <laughs> the, the, the fabric of the matrix is breaking down, Chris. <laughs> Honestly, that's what it feels like. We, we got like seven to eight inches of snow here. I think it's the most snowfall we've had since like 1944. Um, so yeah, it just, it feels like, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, is this the year is, is Jesus coming back this year? Cause it, it feels like just some craziness is, is going to be popping off by the end of the year. If, uh, if, if Jesus is a snowboarder that likes to snowboard in Tennessee, then yes, he's coming back this year. Okay. I'm blindsiding Mike and Tori. I'm going to be pitting them against each other at the end of this episode and I'm going to be testing their knowledge of conspiracy theories. So I've got some trivia questions that I'm going to ask them. Uh, so um, yeah, stay tuned for that. All right. So Mike, now you've, you've got a very interesting topic uh, that you want to cover. So I'm going to let you jump in, man, take the reins. Yeah. So basically I did back before Camp Herman, there was a YouTube channel called Detox Babylon. Made a video talking about simulation hypothesis, okay? And so what I want to do is I want to set the stage. There's a couple of uh, clips I'm going to play. And when you hear these clips, in light of how I'm going to set this up for you, everybody's going to have their own little aha moment here. Okay. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to have that aha moment for you. I'm going to let you guys have it. So the first video, the first clip I want to play, it's just explaining what simulation hypothesis is. So we'll roll that clip. <laughs> The simulation hypothesis is a proposal regarding the nature of existence. The proposal is that all the current existence that humans know, including the Earth and the rest of the universe, could in fact be an artificial simulation, such as a computer simulation. Some versions rely on the development of a simulated reality, a proposed technology that would be able to convince its inhabitants that the simulation was real. The simulation hypothesis bears a close resemblance to various other skeptical scenarios from throughout the history of philosophy. The hypothesis was popularized in its current form by Nick Bostrom. Nick Bostrom is a Swedish-born philosopher at the University of Oxford. In 2003 he wrote an article called, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? Here is his premise. Many works of science fiction as well as some forecasts by serious technologists and futurologists predict that enormous amounts of computing power will be available in the future. Let us suppose for a moment that these predictions are correct. One thing that later generations might do with their super powerful computers is run detailed simulations of their forebears or of people like their forebears. Because their computers would be so powerful, they could run a great many such simulations. Suppose that these simulated people are conscious, as they would be if the simulations were sufficiently fine-grained and if a certain quite widely accepted position in the philosophy of mind is correct, then it could be the case that the vast majority of minds like ours do not belong to the original race but rather to people simulated by the advanced descendants of an original race. Nick Bostrom's Conclusion 
It is then possible to argue that, if this were the case, we would be rational to think that we are likely among the simulated minds rather than among the original biological ones. Therefore, if we don't think that we are currently living in a computer simulation, we are not entitled to believe that we will have descendants who will run lots of such simulations of their forebears. So basically, what that video is saying is that if it's possible for us, where we are right now, to be able to create a simulation that is un that you that you you couldn't tell the difference between the simulation and the real world. If we get to that point, then what's to say that we're not already living in a simulation? So, and I want people to understand. I want people to understand a couple of things. Do I believe in simulation hypothesis? I do not. I categorically reject it. And I know that there are Christians that will tell people that we live in God's simulation. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, right? But to, to think that I'm in a computer right now, it's nonsense, okay? At, from, from my understanding of Christianity and my relationship with God, I think it's, I think it's bull. But Nick, Nick is saying that if we get to that point, then we must have already gotten there before and that we're, we're just another layer and there's layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of different simulations. Now, the weird thing about it is, is that I want to play you guys this clip and then I'll let you and uh, I'll let Chris and Tori react. Um, but this, it's interesting because based on that, you have this guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson, saying this. Chuck, I've been public on the fact that I'm waiting for someone to convince me that we don't live in a simulation. The arguments put forth have been quite convincing okay. to me. And most of the best arguments are traceable to a guy named Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at the University of Oxford. Okay. Our computing power is growing rapidly. Right. We create simulations of worlds. We have video games with characters that are inside the video game. Right. Imagine a day where you can simulate a world so perfectly with life forms, humans, so well mm -hmm. that you can recreate every single neurosynaptic thought you could have, but now you're in the simulation on the computer. People will just bend over backwards coming up with stories of creation that don't involve God. Because I feel like with the whole simulation hypothesis, and I'm not trying to do what you said about like, oh, God's simulation, but like, why is it easier for them to believe that like an ancient race lived before us, created supercomputers and created this world that we're living in now? Like, why is that easier to believe than, than God's word and what it says? And like, in the beginning, there was God. And then like, God created all of this, you know, because it's like, if you have a problem with a creator, you're saying that there was a creator multiple creators who created this simulation we're living in which yeah by the way i also categorically disagree with i feel like there's way too many plot holes for this to be a simulation um but yeah i don't know why is that easier to believe in and also like who created that original race then that like created the supercomputers you know i feel like it's such a more complicated story and and you know like darwinists you come up with it, you know, like the origins of the universe and like life evolving from a single celled organism. And, you know, like, why is that easier for you to believe than that there's a creator, like an intelligent designer, God, who created all of this? I don't know. Chris, you're up. I can't help but think of the game. I never played it, but I know people did. I think it's called, is it called Sims? Mm -hmm. Yes. The game Sims, right? Where you can, I don't know, what are you like just building? cities and people and I mean, it's like a simulation yeah, yeah it's like a simulation it's game that you get to you mm -hmm. get to control um and i'm just like my first thought is okay so they're saying that that okay if it's a simulation then the sims or just for lack of a better term i'll call them sims people in simulation are they saying that they are aware like, I don't know. It just, I ha I have trouble with this. Obviously, again, we're, we're in agreement. Like, I don't think there's anything to this. And I couldn't agree more with Tori, the, the lengths that people will go to, to not believe 
in God. And I think ultimately it just comes down to wanting to be in control, wanting to be essentially their own God, but only in so much as they don't have to be accountable or they don't want to be accountable to God for the way they live their life. They want to be able to live their life however they want without any consequences. So couldn't agree with you more, Tori. Um, so that would be the benefit to them, right? Cause it's like, maybe they are acknowledging like, okay, this probably was created by a creator, but if it was just like a simulation, like just an experiment and we're just Sims living in the simulation, then it does take away all personal accountability for yeah, absolutely. No accountability. So like you, what what you do, I mean, doesn't matter. And there's a number of different beliefs and philosophies. Um, so like if you take or even with like um, the thought of like evolution, it's like, well, you know, you're just we're just meat suits or, you know, we're, we're meat suits that we're um, we're just reacting to chemicals and and things that are chemical reactions in the body and hormones and all this kind of stuff so there's really not any free will you're just doing what you are kind of programmed to do so to speak and so there's no accountability there either so there's like a ton of kind of different beliefs where yeah you're not really accountable and i think a lot of them would be ones that don't appeal to any sort of like higher power right there's there's no god so this is this is a great segue to to the conversation you guys brought up you're talking about free will you're talking about accountability you guys got to watch this next clip and then i'm gonna we'll, we'll bring this all all home turns out you were right i'm gonna ask you about free will oh okay <laughs> uh so allow me to summarize the summary TLDR, and uh, maybe you tell me where I'm wrong. So free will is an illusion, and even the experience of free will is an illusion. Like we don't even experience it. What am, am I? Am I good in my summary? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a line that's a little hard to scan for people. I, I say that it's, it's not merely that free will is an illusion. The illusion of free will is an illusion, right? right? Like there is no illusion of free will. But the illusion of free will is an illusion in that as you pay more attention to your experience, you begin to see that it's totally compatible with an absence of free will. You don't, I mean, coming to back to the place we started, you don't know what you're going to think next. You don't know what you're going to intend next. You don't know what's going to just occur to you that you must do next you don't know you don't know how much you're going to feel the behavioral imperative to act on that thought if you suddenly feel oh i don't need to do that that's i can do that tomorrow you don't know where that comes from you didn't know that was going to arise you didn't know that was going to be compelling all of this is compatible with some evil genius in the next room just typing in code into your experience just like this okay let's give him the uh oh my god i just forgot it was going to be our anniversary in one week thought right give him the cascade of fear uh I'll give him yeah. give him this brilliant idea for the thing he can buy that's going to take him no time at all and this yeah. this you know overpowering sense of relief all of our experiences is, is compatible with with the the script already being written right is and i'm not saying the script is written i'm not saying that fatalism is you know is um the right way to look at this but yeah but the question is Say that this call, what, what was it? The horse of consciousness. Let's call it the uh, the consciousness generator black box that mm -hmm. we don't understand. And is it possible that the script that we're walking along, that we're playing, that's already written, is actually being written in real time? Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're driving down a road, and in real time, that road is being laid down. I cannot believe it. How can they think that it is completely plausible for someone to be on the other side of some metaphorical wall typing in our thoughts and and like how we will respond to literally every stimulus in our life that someone else is controlling all of that. And the the illusion of free will is the illusion. All of that. Like I just yeah, I just don't understand. They're just doing like somersaults philosophically to try to get around there being a god and also just i couldn't help but think this is like this spiritual 
this this is like the philosophy of you will own nothing and be happy because it's like we don't have to own our actions we don't have to own our own thoughts you don't have to own any mistakes you make because maybe you didn't make it maybe someone is like on an another side of a simulation controlling you you know so it's like you don't have to own anything that you do say think feel etc like that's yeah exactly and so when you look and before i let chris jump in here when you look and and i've listened to a lot of sam harris like just because i just wanted to get a feel of who this guy was and he he has a meditation app and basically what he claims that he figured out during his meditation is that he had no control over what thoughts came into his mind, right? And that over time, he had the, this revelation that, that nobody is good and nobody is bad and we should love people no matter what they've done and treat them well, right? And it, it is, it's very, very hypocritical uh, for him to say this as Sam Harris uh, was actually guilty of retweeting an article about Derek, Derek Gilbert's wife, Sharon Gilbert, when she said something on the Jim Baker show that was controversial. Now, why are you making fun of it if, if she wasn't in control of saying what she was saying and you want to give a murderer a pass, but when it comes to somebody who you might label a fundamentalist Christian, which the Gilberts, we know them, they're not, they don't fall under fundamentalist Christians. Okay. But the dude it is at the core of his being, he's a hypocrite that is setting a standard and setting a law that he himself cannot even satisfy. Chris, what do you think? I think it's interesting that they'll go so far as to say we are you're you are being controlled by this cosmic programmer, right? Who has designed where you are. And I'm like, that sounds in some ways a lot like the reality that we live in as believers where we've got god who designed created us right not is not just sitting there you know putting thoughts in our head um but one thing that does jive with the the aspect of putting thoughts in our head is that whatever this um mind to mind communication that um the the demonic realm has with us you know the kind of classic devil on your shoulder kind of thing whispering temptations and such and not to mention our own flesh for that matter uh, which is probably far more um guilty of a lot of the things than than demons are of of kind of trying to put thoughts in our heads and influence us uh, but that's a conversation for another day. But yeah, no, I mean it's 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 just interesting that they'll they'll go that far, but they can't they they can't or rather won't make that leap. And again, I think it just goes back to they don't they don't want to be accountable. Um, and I think it's interesting that this guy's you know that meditation. I'm like clearly the demonic is is giving him that influence. If he's coming to these, if he's having these thoughts and come to these conclusions while he's in a meditative state, I mean, that just, that sounds like, um, you know, he's being, you know, clearly being influenced by the demonic. But where I'm going with this, it is, if you look at cosmology today, right? Our cosmology is based around the Big Bang Theory that and I'm talking about cosmology that they teach in colleges, right? So the Big Bang happened, and then it's just this huge domino effect of trillions or millions and billions and whatever, bunch of years, and boom, here we are, right? And this is being taught in school. It's, it's, it's what we understand at this point in history uh, from the best scientific perspective we can come up with, right? 
as a collegiate mm -hmm. society. I'm not talking about Christianity, here, right? And what I'm saying here is if we, if we fast forward 50 to 100 years, maybe even 200 years, maybe even 1,000 years, okay? I'm not, I don't think the, I'm not like a, a the return of Jesus is, is like coming any day guy, okay? I'm not there. That's not where I'm at, you know? Now, could he? Absolutely. Boom. But I just, I believe, and I think, I think, I think I would be with Doug Hamp on this because I think Doug and I have talked about it a few times um, that there's a lot that still needs to happen, but it doesn't really matter, right? It, it doesn't matter when Jesus comes back when it comes down to this, because this is as the Big Bang Theory is a flawed, even flawed by scientific standards, okay, this will be, okay, in quotes, the new cosmology going forward. As we have more um, computing uh, power, as Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about, we will get closer to being able to create a simulation. If the day comes, if the day comes where we do create a simulation, Nick Bostrom will be known as a prophet. He will not see this in his lifetime. We won't see it in our lifetime. But in a thousand years from now, let's just say 500 years from now, they will say, hey, look, Nick Bostrom said this 500 years ago, that if we got to this point, then based on probabilities and statistics, we must already be in a simulation boom right then and there cosmology changes what they teach in college will change here's the kicker who okay let me go back. i'm sorry here's the kicker alistair crawley is quoted saying something and it fits this he says that today they call them angels. Tomorrow, they will call them something else. Okay. Chris mentioned it already about what Sam Harris said about somebody coding in your thoughts. Right. Who are, who are the demons? Who are the aliens? Who are the ones that live outside of our simulation? And so now a paranormal, all the paranormal activity is explained. Oh, these are entities, coders that are entering our simulation, right? They know more than we do, so we should listen to them. In all aspects, when you look at the alien deception that the fringe Christian community has been talking about, by and large, for the past 40 years. Yes, 40 years. Okay? If you're out there talking about aliens, you didn't come up with it. You didn't have a revelation. It wasn't you. This revelation has been building upon, we've been building upon each other this whole time. Not one of us holds the key. It's a collective work that we've all been doing that has this revelation but this this will change the alien deception into the outside of the simulation deception going forward because in 500 years we'll believe i mean and i'm just saying if it comes out that way it will they will not be aliens they will not be demons they will not be fairies they will be coders that entered or coded themselves into our matrix and nevertheless we will have to bow down to them and listen to them because they are maybe not the creators but they're a part of the company that created us so to speak um and that's what i see coming um it's just my opinion i think the alien deception is it, it was good for a while. 
Like it made sense for a while, right? Only if Jesus was going to come back in that time frame, because the enemy is ready to go. He's got his, he's got a plan. He's ready to go at any given point using whatever deception and using the knowledge of the world and using that as his platform, right? Of understanding. But 500 years from now, we will think different. Human humanity will be exponentially different in 500 years from now than us from 500 years in the past. Okay. I mean, exponentially because of where technology is going. And so my whole thing about talking about the simulation hypothesis is it it still is on the fringe of even the collegiate system but sam harris has a lot of influence over a lot of young people okay he's a guy he's probably i don't know mid to late 40s maybe early 50s and his audience is generation z it's college students that are buying his meditation app that are buying into this philosophy that you really don't have free will. Okay. And they're buying it because it, it again, it, it kind of lifts that accountability off of you. So guys, um, I'll let you jump in if you have any thoughts on that and then we can kind of wrap it up. Yeah. I just, I just keep thinking like they just want to use different words. I mean, simulation has to be in the thesaurus like it has to be a synonym of creation right i feel like we live in a simulation like yeah we live in a creation we're saying the same thing but it also makes me think just like the honorary part of me wants to posit a legit hypothesis that like we are in a musical like we are in a play you know and like stir that like guys i think we're living in a play because there's these people backstage and they know what's going on and we talked about that with paul Stobbs, you know with like the nephilim but it's like well yeah like they they can show up to you they can pretend to be like so and so your relative they can like speak to you like they know you and i think i said because it's like we're on stage like in a play and they're backstage and they know what's going on and they know our characters and all of that stuff but yeah so maybe instead of a simulation it's just pick your metaphor, you know. This is the reason why the great deception happens. It's because people believe the lie. Whatever that lie is, it doesn't matter. Tori said it earlier. Whatever you have to do to deflect it and say it's not God, they would rather believe the pile of crap than to believe that the God who is God, the God of Israel, Isaac, and Jacob, that that God wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us and that he shows up when you want that relationship and when your heart is contrite and broken and lost and you're beat down and you have nothing else to cry out to. You can't cry out to your coders. They don't care. You can't cry out to evolution evolution will eat you alive but you cry out to yahweh you cry out to jesus with a contrite and sincere heart that's why christians are willing to die for their faith not because they believe something it's not about belief anymore it's a knowing if i know something i don't need to believe it because i know it I don't need to believe that two plus two is four. Belief, be, the, the, the word, word belief, it almost indicates that you don't know. It do, actually does. Knowing says that I know. That I know that I know that I know. That's why Christians will die for it. I'm done. Chris, let's do let's do the conspiracy theory stuff. You could stop me if I get if I get too No. <laughs> no, brother, that was good. No, we we needed to hear that. That was fantastic. Yeah. All right. I don't know what we're calling this segment, and I don't know if we're ever going to do this again, but Tori, Mike, I've got some trivia questions here for you. So this is a, this is multiple choice, okay? So Mike, we'll start with you. From 1996 to 2012, what company did the U.S. military pay millions of dollars to investigate UFOs? Was it 
SpaceX, Halliburton, Bigelow Aerospace, or Boeing? Bigelow Aerospace. All right. One for Mike. He got that one right. Tori, what term does the U.S. military use in official reports when describing UFO encounters? Is it UFP, UAP, UHF, or UMP? What is UAP? Fantastic. Tori got one. So we're one in one. Conspiracy theorists claim that the exposure to what can damage your skin, eyes, immune system, and cause your DNA to begin to break down? Alien graviton beams, cable news, GMOs, or the 5G network? The 5G network. All right. Mike got that one right. Good job. My all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Cable news. Okay, That's Tori. DNA damage. Like CNN, yeah. CNBC. Tori, what machine did people fear would destroy humanity when it was activated on September 10th, 2008? IBM's Blue Brain, Cyberdyne's Skynet system, the CERN Super Collider, or the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket? What is the CERN Super Collider? Correct for 1,000. <laughs> I made that up. Okay, Mike. Victims that claim to be targeted individuals accuse the government of doing what to them? Oh, wait, wait. Don't don't give me the multiple choice on this. Re, re, wait, read it again. He's going rogue. He's going rogue. <laughs> going Mikey this. Stibbs. Dude, it's, it's the Havana Syndrome. It's the direct energy weapon system. <laughs> Was that, is that your answer? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Attacking them with electronic weapons. Yeah, and they call Good it job. they call it Havana syndrome. Okay. Wow. I didn't know that. All right, Tori. The multiple choice is off the table. Wait, what if I want to use it? I'm nervous. Let me hear yeah, let me hear the question first. The FBI sent letters to Martin Luther King Jr. that attempted to blackmail him into doing what? Oh, give me the multiple choice. <laughs> cancel his net, hit, cancel his I have a dream speech, running for public office, committing suicide, renouncing the civil rights movement. Ooh. I'll read the question again. The That's FBI awesome. sent letter to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that attempted that attempted to blackmail him into doing what? Sorry, okay, so they wanted to blackmail him into, I'm not saying this is my answer, but committing suicide or not committing suicide. What did you say? Committing suicide. Gotcha. Okay. Um, honestly, this is hard. I'm not sure. I feel like it could be any of the above. I want to go with D. Running like for public office? Oh, no. Yeah, let's go with B, running for public office. I was going to say renouncing the movement, but okay. yeah, running for public office. Let's say that. All right. I'm, gonna say, dibs. I'm, I'm going with D because it's much more effective long term. In yeah. The, in, I don't know. So meaning the running for public office? No, 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 no. I would go with renouncing the civil rights movement. Renouncing the movement. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mike's going with renouncing the civil rights movement. So I actually did know this. The FBI was trying to get him to commit suicide. No way. Yes. Like, yes. In, like in letters Epstein. that they were sending him. They were trying to, yeah, convince him that he needed to commit suicide. And so didn't. Mike wins. So they shot him? You guys merely adopted the French. <laughs> I was, I was, was born raised in, in it. it. <laughs> I was born in the French. Mr. Gary Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Wayne. <laughs> I love that. Uh, all right. Um, this was fun. This was love y'all. Camp on, Tori. Kim Von Mike. Until next time. Peace. Shalom. Fallen sons of the most high God took advantage of the planet he made. Forming the holy alliance of evil and look at the daughters of Adam in vain. Then the flood rain came to restore his creation order to how he arranged. Put the disembodied spirits of the giants still want a war, still want to kill in the court. To see the blood of the